Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Welcome to another episode of Inspired, and I'm Michael Adamides, and I'm here to talk about how to change your thinking to change your life. And how this all started for me was some 38 years ago. And my wife and I had decided to go to England and we purchased a combi van and spent a few months driving around England. But it was now starting to get very cold. We were getting on to winter. And they, some friends suggested, you can't spend winter in England. You've got to go somewhere else. So we trooped through France and Spain and ended up in Morocco, about a thousand kilometers down the Atlantic coast, to a place called Tagazut Beach. And on the very northern end of Tagazut Beach, there were some 500 other Europeans in vans camping and just seeing out the winter. And while we were there, we met a number of very interesting people. And my wife was introduced to friends there who said, look, we've met a guru and you must come and see this guru. But I thought, no, nah, not interested. I just finished, I started off at university doing a biology, chemistry, mathematics degree, then swapped over to economics and accounting. And I thought this whole guru thing was just a little bit of nonsense. But after putting it off for a little while, she said, look, come and, come and see him. And I said, look, I'm not interested. You go, and um, then you can come back and tell me what it's like. Uh, but she said, look, let's go for a walk. He was camped some three kilometers further down the beach from where we were presently staying. And we walked down the beach, and I said, look, I'll hang, on the, hang out here at the beach. You go and see him. And, um, you know, don't take too long. She said, look, I'll only be 15 minutes. I'll come back. Three quarters of an hour later, she still hadn't come back. And I'm thinking, what's going on here? And then about an hour afterwards, she comes back all excited and, uh, Michael, Michael, you have to see him. So she drags me to go and see this guy who's supposed to be the guru. And I walk off the beach and there's a clearing and there must be three other vans parked there. And there's these two very beautiful blonde women and they're with their kids and they're cooking dinner by a camp stove. And they said, oh, you're here to see Hamid. And both of them gave me a big hug. Well, back in those days, I never hugged anyone. And to have two strange women hug me, especially you know, very beautiful blonde ones, I'm thinking, wow, what's, what's this? And they said, go and see him. And there's this big Mercedes bus. And on the top of the bus, there was a platform. And then he went into the bus and a set of stairs and there's a, a, a hole cut in the roof. And you could climb to the top of the bus. And sitting on the platform of this bus was this big black guy. And he's wearing a loincloth. And I come up through the roof, onto the roof there, and he leans over to me and says, how are you going, you know, mate? And gives me a really big hug. And this guy was an American Negro from Harlem, New York. And he used to be a former jazz musician. And at the age of 47, he had reached this state of enlightenment. And um, he was now in Morocco with his wife, Zeynab. Her name was Jenny, a former uh, German starlet, they had met in New York, and they had a four-year-old child. And this experience with this man totally transformed my life. Until that time, I just didn't believe in you know, a guru. And I'd heard about gurus and people like this. But here was this guy, and we spent two months living with him uh, from... February 1978 till the end of March 1978. And it completely, as I said, transformed my life. He was a guy who seemingly had nothing and yet had everything. And he was in such a state of clarity and positivity that he would only have to think of something and someone would come and gift it to him. And my entire 
view of the world changed from this very material, scientific, linear understanding to realizing that life is more than that and that there is the power of the mind over your present day uh, existence. And Hamid, with his um, wife Zenim and their child Boo, after two months of being with them, said, look, we're, we're sick and tired of you guys. We're going to leave. And um, I saw them depart, and they had their clothes on. They were dressed in white, and they were just with their sandals and nothing else, and they were just walking away. And here was this amazing experience of a person who purely through the power of his thinking could have literally anything he wanted. Prior to letting it all go, he was a jazz musician, used to play the 12-string guitar in New York, had a very successful career, had made millions of dollars, owned a house in New York, a house in Hawaii, had a private plane, a couple of Mercedes. He was a very successful person. And through a whole lot of internal circumstances, changed and was permanently in this different state and decided to give it all up. And several years later, here he is in Morocco and I've met him. And um, I was so enamored with this person that I decided that when I went back to, came back to Australia, I just couldn't live a normal life. And so instead of going back to Sydney and following a, a career in business, because that's what my parents expected of me, uh, I dropped out. I went to Nimbin. I joined a commune. I became a hippie, long hair, beard. And um, I thought, wow, I'm just going to give away the material life because there's something more to it than this. We just, you know, it's not just about the money. There's got to be a deeper meaning. And I thought the way I'd find this deeper meaning is by um, living closer to nature and uh, letting go of the commercial material world. A year of being on the commune, <clears throat> I was absolutely uh, disappointed. I thought, here I am with a community of people who were searching for something. And what I found was mostly people who were running away. And it took me about another year to get away from that. And so, but in the meantime, I met these people with shaved heads, orange robes. They were involved in Hindu yogi, yoga, and they were called swamis. And they were the only people that seemed to make sense to me. They were practical, and yet they had a, a much larger understanding of what life is about. And I thought, wow. Uh, I'll see what happens here. And so I, I got involved with these people and became a Swami myself. Shaved head, orange robes, and spent two years there. And we would be uh, meditating, doing good work, and, uh, and doing yoga and all these sort of things. But after a couple of years of being in the ashram, um, the big guru came out from, from India, and I was fortunate enough to have a private session with him. And I th went and sat in front of him and he's sitting on a couch with his personal assistant beside him. And I'm sitting on a cushion in front of him. And I said to him, Baba G, what should I do? And he just sits there very quietly, goes into a trance state. He's gone for about four or five seconds, comes back and says, your place is in the world. You shouldn't be here. And I just went, boom, the lights went on. And I realized, you know, my journey was the journey of engaging in life, to become successful in life, to make my personal transformations occur through succeeding in life. So who do I have to become in order for these things to front up in my life? And so I left the ashram, and my, my wife and I were both in the ashram. She's a clinical psychologist. I was trained as uh, an economist and an accountant at the time. But where I was on the northern coast of New South Wales and Lismore, there wasn't really any other job opportunity. So I ended up going into youth counselling. And I became a youth counsellor. And she's working at the local uh, hospital. And after about a year of doing this, uh, one day she comes to me and says, um, I've met someone else. I'm no longer in love with you. Um, 
our relationship is over. And it was like this big black hole had opened up for me and I had just dropped straight into it. And um, this was mad because a couple of weeks beforehand, I had contemplated leaving her. We had reached a point in our relationship where we were, there's a lot of misunderstanding. Um, uh, we weren't intimate anymore. We were very unhappy with each other. And I was thinking, well, maybe it's time to go. But my background is uh, Greek. I was born in Australia from a, a Greek parentage. And in our culture, you don't leave relationships. You're married for life. And so even though I was unhappy, there was no way I was going to leave. And I was fortunate that she thought differently and thought, no, it's not working and I'm leaving you. But I still felt devastated, even though I knew it was the right thing and I thought of doing it myself. And I couldn't understand this. I thought, why am I feeling so bad? And for literally nine months after this experience, I was depressed. And I would wake up feeling very sad and unhappy. And a friend of mine said, I've heard about this amazing therapist. She works in Sydney. Her name's Arara Karasbrook, and she does all these personal development courses. Why don't you come to Sydney and try it? So in September of uh, 1981, I came and did my first personal development course. And um, it was like the lights went on. I could, the sadness left. Uh, I felt positive. I felt, yes, I could go forward. And I even thought maybe I could go back to my wife in Lismore and see if we could resurrect the relationship. I don't know why I thought that. That was a bit stupid. But anyway, I thought so. So I went back and um, for a week it looked positive, but then uh, life had moved on too far. And came back and did another, develop another weekend of personal development and an Arara said it to me at the time, why don't you come and do an extended period of work? So in early February of 1982, I came to Sydney to just work on myself, to do therapy. I wasn't interested in being a therapist or doing anything like this. I'm thinking, no, I'll go back into business. And um, our family always kind of had a, an inkling for property and possibly getting into property development. But... Uh, I'm back there. I did the three months with her. And this was a massive transformation, uh, a real change in who I am and where I should be and what I need. To continue enjoying this presentation, download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today.